the mo when we asked them, are you registered to vote, are you registered to vote, most of them said yes. Wonderful. So we have been doing our job since like the beginning. Um, so it's actually pretty great right now. And now there, I, there's a conception that a lot of the uh, students, young people today, are, you know, more democratic or they were heavily involved because of Sanders. Uh, um, do you, what do you find? Yeah. Where are they leaning? Where On your campus, where it, are they leaning? It lean? depends. Um, there are many um, um, Sanders supporters, but uh, most of those supporters have gone to Hillary Clinton. Really? Yes. The ones that I know, at least. And the ones that are like the diehard Bernie supporters, they, again, know that they're not going to vote for Trump. They will vote. Nine times out of ten. But um, this is what I don't understand with that reasoning. Especially the Sanders people going to Hillary. That's to me like the roach voting for the shoe. I mean, because it was Hillary that stole the election from Sanders. Yeah. So why would you go to the person that stabbed you and gutted you? And then Sanders, of course, committed the worst political backstabbing I'd ever seen. I mean, he just got the information on the WikiLeaks. Here, they stole the election from you, Sanders. Go in there and get that nomination. And he just went in there and capitulated to Clinton. He just, you know, don't, 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 don't you got to vote for Hillary Clinton, which is diametrically opposed to everything he was, he was saying all along. Yeah. So I don't understand that mentality, and then I look at it this way. This election seemed to be about the people versus the corruption that they're seeing in both parties. So they were, that's why Sanders became popular on the left and Trump on the right. They were both anti-established candidates that primarily said the same things, you know, uh, so why wouldn't the Sanders be if they want to establish? Because he's not getting any big money from the Wall Street. I mean, Clinton is and all the rest of them. This man is, I mean, he's got $500 trillion against him. I mean, all the elites are against him. All the establishment is against him. To me, that seems it would appeal to the young people that are in our establishment. So why would they go to Hillary, of course is the worst, and then throwing your vote away on well, Gary Weir's uh, Aleppo Johnson and you know and Joe Stein, which is of course that's like a flea fart on a, a, on a dog. Well, my, my job is just to make sure that they get out and vote and that their voice is heard for the students because students generally don't vote. So my job is just to make sure the students are registered and then they get out to vote. Whoever they vote for, that's totally up to them. I don't, I'm non-biased. I don't say my opinion in, on the election. Just make sure your voice is heard. How do you feel? How do you, how do you feel? Where are you leaning? I don't know where I'm leaning. Because I am fiscally conservative and Well, I, I think that's, I, I, then Trump, of course, would be the fiscally conservative. But I also find him to be uh, liberal in a lot of areas, too, because he was at one time. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. No, I, I don't know. I mean, even, even with, like I said, being fiscally conservative, he, you know, I mean, I like the, it's bad, but he does use the system um, to his benefit. Sometimes, you know, that's what it's there for, and you gotta, or else it's gonna screw you over. Um, I just don't think that this is a time. Now, if this was the election they had planned, because they really wanted this to be Clinton against Bush, mm -hmm. and we'd all hold our noses, and most of us would stay home, and then I would definitely say vote third party, make a statement. But this is what Trump brought up, and, and most people already that are astute in politics already know. We're fighting people that are globalists. They want to 
eviscerate all sovereign nations and form a one world government. This is what it's about. This is what these trade pacts are about. Do you believe so? No? May I say that you ought to read books like this in getting an education. You understand, this is Peter Dale Scott, right? Former diplomat, right? Academic. I mean, President Eisenhower, in his farewell address, warned us about the military industrial complex and the technological elite taking over our government. Farewell address, we got Kennedy. In the speech that got Kennedy killed, look at it, listen to it, I got it on the computer right here. He, in that speech, mentions by name the shadow government and the fact that they have their own army and they're, they, they're, they're never held accountable for anything that they do and that they're, they're the real powers that we need to get rid of. I mean, these, are, these, these things exist. They never leave. They never leave. The ones that never leave, the policy makers, the revolving door, the you know, the financial institutions with the you know the military industrial complex and the State Department. These people are the same. And if you look at are you familiar with the Bilderberg group? See you're a political person, you should kind of know these things. The Bilderberg group is the top 120 elitist of the world. Meet once a year in different locations around the world, every four years in North America, for about four days. They are the ones that run things. Both Obama and Clinton were at the Bilderberg meeting in 08. It was then that they said, you're going to be president, you're going to be secretary of state. When he's done, you'll have your chance. That was said. There. Jason said. I mean, the Bilderberg group exists. Look this up. The CFR. I will. It's very nice to meet you. I'm sorry I have to go, but okay. thank you so much for everything.